as we begin our service this morning, you will notice that things are a bit different. We don't have some of our choir members here singing. This past week, we received from the diocese guidelines for how to safely worship together. Um, and one of those is that singing will not be permitted in this space uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, we do hope to have some recordings as we move forward, but not receiving these and the guidelines until uh, late Thursday. There was no opportunity today. So if you are at home and if you have downloaded or are looking at the bulletin, uh, please feel free uh, to sing along at home with the words of today's hymns. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, and blessed be, be His kingdom, kingdom now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But... Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son, but God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that the offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy 
And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skein with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became, and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got him a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read from Psalm 86 responsively by whole verse. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am, I am faithful. faithful. Save, Save your, your servant, servant who puts his trust, trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden, Gladden the, the soul, soul of your, your servant, servant for, for to you, O Lord, Lord I lift my soul. soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give, Give ear, ear, O Lord, Lord to my, my prayer, prayer, and, and attend, attend to the to voice, voice of my supplications. supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among, Among the, the gods, gods there is, there is none, none like you, O Lord, nor, nor anything, anything like, like your works. works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are for great, great, you do you wondrous things, things and, and you, you alone, alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we, who die to sin, go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old life was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave to be like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. One's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. May what I say and what you hear be in the name of God. Amen. Amen. It continues to amaze me how often I hear people say, you know, the church isn't supposed to be political. And quite often when you hear John preach or, God willing, when you hear me preach, I hear comments and read comments from other people that say, you know, you're just being too political. It seems to me today, especially right now, that everything has become political. Whether I wear this mask or not is making a political statement to some. I have to say that when I first read this morning's gospel lesson earlier in the week, I was scared to death. I thought, how in the world 
can I preach from today's gospel and not have some text message or comment from friend or family member saying, you know what? Once again, you're just being too political right now. I believe firmly that the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we are reminded in today's gospel, calls us to make difficult choices and to make unpopular decisions in the midst of the life we live. We are to love our neighbor just as much as we love ourselves. We are to welcome the sojourner in our midst, the widow and the orphan, the prisoner, any who might be weaker or more vulnerable than we are. That is our calling through our Lord and Savior. We hear in Matthew, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you've done it to me. Galatians reminds us to bear one another's burdens and by so doing, fulfill the law of Christ. James shares these words. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If our brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one says to him, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving the things they need for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it doesn't have works, is dead. In living the way of Jesus Christ, we are called to live in the world, not apart from the world. We are called not to isolate ourselves within the walls of this church, within the confines of our homes, within the context and confines of our warm, comfortable, or cool, comfortable lives. But we are called to be smack dab in the middle of the world proclaiming the good news of the gospel. We are called to live in the middle of the messy and the unpopular. We are called to be in the midst of it all. We are called to get down and dirty in the midst of the pain and suffering that we see in those of those around us, as we see it in our friends, as we see it in our neighbors, as we encounter it wherever we do, we are called to be there and to proclaim the word of hope and the word of acceptance, and the word of God's unmerited love for all creation. In the midst of inequality and injustice, in the midst of the world that surrounds us, we are called to be there. Not just to express platitudes of love and hope, but to actively give people hope in the midst of their despair. The gospel of Jesus Christ is political. It is everything that we believe wrapped up into who we are as Christian people. It is life that is lived. It is our life if we have chosen to follow Jesus Christ. It's not easy. It's much easier to separate our church life from the life than the world that surrounds us. But that's not where we're called to live. 
St. Luke in his gospel shares this. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And was his custom. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up and read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. When the gospel speaks, our, law, law, our lives are held to account. When the gospel speaks, we are called to be in the world proclaiming it. It's never easy. Do not think that the words of the gospel come to bring peace, but rather a sword. People will disagree. People will say ugly things. People will try their best to get us to just shut But we are to proclaim in what we say, in what we do, the year of the Lord's favor. And I have no doubt that there are those who wish that I, like Jesus, had simply read and sat down. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our, our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, 
for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for Donald, our president, for Brian and Henry, our governors, for the leadership of the CSRA, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for our congregation in Quentin, St. James, and in our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, for the congregation in Los Contras, St. Peter the Apostle, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Frank, our bishop, for our clergy, George, John, Bill, and Irwin, and for all bishops and other ministers, for Todd and members of our acolyte guild, for all who serve God in the church, for all who are serving our country at home and abroad, especially Joe, Dylan, Joe, Trey, Graham, Toby, Zach, Jonathan, Sylvan, Zachary, Stephen, Bennett, Chris, Jim, and Andrew, that they may be strengthened by the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Bob, Susan, John, Mary, Reese, Ari, Aria, Bill, Margaret, Martha, George, Lewis, Sid, Bob, Pete, Reba, Keisha, Lois, Alice, Norm, Julie, Daryl, Teresa, Bernice, Harry, Barbara, Edna, Mary, Rusty, Jeff, Melanie, Johnny, George, Rich, Victor, Lonnie, Stuart, Bill, and Wayne. and all those we remember in our hearts. For all health care providers, first responders, essential workers, and all who offer themselves in the service of others, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, give comfort and renew their energy strength and compassion. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving Spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, hatred cease, that our divisions may be healed. We may live in justice, and peace. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And on this Father's Day, we especially give thanks to God for the divine gift of fatherhood in all its many and diverse forms. Let us pray for all the fathers among us today for our own fathers, those living, and those who have died, for the fathers who loved us, and for those who fell short of loving us fully, for all who hope to be fathers and those whose hopes to have children have been frustrated, for all fathers who have buried children, for all who have been fathers to others in any way, those who have been our substitute fathers, and we who have done the same for those in need.
We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We are glad that you are here with us this morning whether on the radio or watching on Facebook. We are glad to have you a part of this worship, and we with you long for the time that we can gather back together in mass uh, in this space. Uh, but it looks as though that time will be sometime in the, not, uh, in, in the future that we do not even begin to know yet. I will share that at this point, uh, the churches in the Augusta Convocation, giving the, given the counts that are uh, not declining and in some areas of our community are increasing, uh, that it looks at this point that we will not be having any form of in-person worship uh, until at least early August. Um, so I just want you to know that at this point, and we will be sending out more information on that as we move forward. Uh, but again, as we have been doing from the beginning, uh, we are exercising under an abundance of caution and uh, wanting to be as safe as possible for the community, for those among us that we care about so deeply. So uh, I do ask that we all keep one another in our prayers as we go through these times together. Uh, John, you have an announcement. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, make everyone aware we're doing a new thing this week. And the new thing is that the Compline service that we've been holding uh, for about the last two months on Zoom will also be broadcast live on Facebook just as those who are watching right now are experiencing. So you will uh, see that, an announcement about that. It should have been in the postings. Um, but if not, we will get another announcement out. But this will be our first week. Technology has a way of unriling things. So uh, we do hope it'll work. But please know, if you are, are watching right now on Facebook, at 8 o'clock Wednesday, you can tune right back in uh, to pray the office of Compline with other parishioners. And if you are in Zoom after the, the Facebook time is over, the Zoom folks will have some social time together. So that's an incentive to get in there on Zoom. But please be in touch with the office if you have any questions about that. Now, for the truly important things. We have all experienced, um, through family and friends, uh, the inability of people passing through important passages of life um, to celebrate with them. And that is true of our graduating high school seniors as much as it is college graduating and everyone else. Normally on this Sunday or a Sunday around now, we would have had all the seniors gathered and presented them with prayer books and prayed over them and had a, a celebration for them. And so 
at this time, at the very least, I invite everyone to offer your prayers of thanksgiving and gratitude for all the work that our young people have done and especially for their resilience at this time of their lives, something no one expected and that will form them forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep you al and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, we are glad you are here with us this morning, and uh, we do long for that time that we can be back together uh, in different ways. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give him thanks and praise it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth for by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord 
to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, remember his, his death, death, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection we, await we await his, his coming, coming in, glory. in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us, us from, from evil. evil. For, for thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty Mighty and ever-living ever God, God, we, we thank, thank you for, for feeding us with the spiritual food of the, the most precious body and blood of your, your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, and, and for, for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we, we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your, of your eternal kingdom. kingdom. And now, now Father, Send, Send us out to, to do, do the work you have given, given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, sustained you, and loved you as a mother. Therefore, Go in peace to follow the good road, and may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.